So you made your way uh, through, all, through, through the African Plains area and all the other African exhibits there after you did Wild Asia. You're exhausted by now. There's some picnic tables there where you're going to your next area. You're going to go look at the Jalinda Baboon exhibit. And this exhibit is woof. The action that will take place in this exhibit, don't blink an eye. Do not blink an eye. The Nubian Ibex, the most sure-footed creature on the planet, just about, oh my gosh, what, what a beautiful, that's the opening photo. The Jalenda baboons from the Ethiopian Highlands. I think they, they might be called the Ethiopian Highlands. I'm not sure exactly what that. I thought it was the baboons. I don't, it doesn't matter. You, I just know where it is. And it's beautiful. And, you you know, there's concessions there. And there's always some peacocks around. And uh, the third species in there is the rock hyrax, which is uh, uh, also in there. So, uh, but certainly it's the baboons and the ibex, uh, the interaction between animals of uh, different species. It's phenomenal. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Take your time here. Sit, get off your weary puppies for a while. You sit at the table, hopefully. I mean, there's other areas you can't really sit, but, uh, yeah, but, I mean, it, it's just an unbelievable exhibit. The action in this exhibit is, but not, not an outdoor exhibit. Yeah, you, you'll, I've never, I don't think I've ever been disappointed once. Uh, I mean, there's always is action, action, action. And I'm still going to hold a surprise when I want to sneak in. To the reptile house, but when you leave the jaw the baboons, you're going back up towards the grizzlies. So maybe we'll just go say hi to a few grizzly bears and then uh, save the reptile house for later. Or maybe since we had the grizzly bears, maybe we'll, uh, who knows? Who knows? You know, you're at the zoo, it's just the impulse. Something brings you one way or brings you the other way. And I'm pretty good at going to the right way. So thanks for tuning in. So we're looking at the elephants. Uh, Closest relative, the rock hyraxes. These rock hyraxes can be fun. Actually, uh, uh, they, they can be doing lots of little things and stuff. Uh, certainly uh, one of the cool little... I mean, you have three different species in this exhibit. The baboons leave them alone. They leave the baboons alone. They leave the ibex alone. These are Nubian ibexes. And uh, if you ever had the pleasure of watching them like this, get on their hind legs and smash... Just together, it is, wow. It, it is, you know, when I was young, I always wanted to see bighorn sheep in the wild, so I've yet to see uh, the, the butt heads, but I think my son Nick took me to see the desert bighorns in uh, Colorado at the uh, Colorado Monument there, so that was really awesome. But Nubian Ibex is certainly one of the highlight, uh, uh, and these are the Jalinda baboons. These are the males. They got the long, long hair and the lion's tail, and the females uh, don't. The males also have these this beautiful face like me. Uh, very, very handsome creatures. But uh, they will give you a ton of entertainment. Uh, and as you'll see, we'll just let the pictures roll and tell the story.
uh, as you can see, they're like hanging from each other's tails and stuff and having a lot of fun times. This is a phenomenal exhibit. Uh, and uh, I I know I mispronounce this. I add letters sometimes to places that don't need letters. And don't ask me why I put an end in it. It, it is, uh, and I mean, it's what I call them forever, too. I mean... Uh, it's ridiculous. It's, uh, there is no end in there, so it is really like a gelat up that moon. Uh, Jelinda. Uh, uh, I did it again with the end, so let's stop putting the end in there. And uh, yes, one of the great exhibits. Uh, and uh, these are very uh, social primates. They live in phenomenally large groups uh, in the wild in Ethiopia. Uh, they eat only grass, uh, pretty much. They, they're pretty much... Uh, grass eaters so uh certainly they are non-stop active here the ibex can be active at times uh and certainly the hyrax can be active at times so this exhibit here is really all out one of the best in the world if you ask me uh if you're gonna come you've had a long zoo day there's some nice areas to eat there's concessions around there uh you can just sit relax and uh just be entertained because you at some point something will stir up and you will be entertained uh there's several different viewing areas one uh wide open with a moat the other ones with the with you know it's a glass front and you can get some unbelievable views as the you know it's a slanted mountain slope that these uh animals uh are exhibited in so 100 percent one of the greatest exhibits there is uh to me uh I never, never get tired. I never get this one. They're also called the bleeding hot monkeys. I don't really, I should have had one in there. Uh, the males and the females, they all have an, uh, uh, a bare patch of skin there. Uh, so, uh, looks like their heart's bleeding. Buzz. Uh, yeah, there's nothing more to say about this exhibit. And then we're going to sneak our way. Sneak our way somewhere. Mm. Where are we heading off to next? Let's just... Pause for a moment and see. So we have a long way to go, and we still got some great, unbelievable exhibits to, to get to. And uh, we're headed up towards the reptile house, and three bears are right out. What do you do? You have to. It pulls you in. you got to go see the great bears one more time. When the great bears are active, to see just the power and uh, see them jostling around is just one of the most amazing, amazing things. And... Uh, uh, I have yet to see a grizzly bear in the wild, even though I've been to Alaska, I've been to Colorado, I've not yet seen a grizzly in the wild, and one day I will may cross that off my bucket list, but thank gosh for uh, this place to at least show me the power, because you can only physically see the power of a creature by really looking at it, uh, and that's all I can say about that, I love grizzlies, so... So we did have to stop at the Grizzlies, and also because if I were to go to the Reptile House, that may be a little too lengthy. So our next stop, just up from the Grizzly Bears, we are going to the Reptile House. And uh, we're also going to stop at the old elephant building, the main center building in the Bronx. It's, uh, it's an unbelievably out uh, structure on the outside of the building. It's just, uh, uh, but inside, there are dragons. And that is so exciting. I'll probably also toss in the very little bit I got from the great Congo forest. Uh, because when I go most of the years, uh, the gorillas ain't out yet. Uh, I have been hampering with some physically disabilities too that uh, I can only go so far, so far. And Jody, the J and J and D, I am Dennis because I haven't even said that in a long time. Uh, the J and D has to see her little fairy penguins because if I don't let her take her fairy penguins, that's it, man. I'm, I'm replaced. That's for sure. So here we go. We're gonna be uh, uh, heading towards the Reptile House. Thank you for tuning into this episode. Uh, next episode, please, please, even if you're a little squirmish, come for the ride. You're gonna see dragons. Dragons, I tell you. I'll also throw you a little baby gorilla in the end with Papa. I promise you, you will see that, okay? Thank you.